Hello, here we are again starting a new project. We're going to do a comic book style Venom sort of uh, Eddie Brock's face with the uh, alien like forming over it. And we're just getting started. Going to block in the darkest areas first and work around that. I started this one off mainly with dark browns and we're going to switch between those and some blues to build up the darker areas. As always, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'll always build up the darkest spots first with blues and browns. I don't like to use black paint. I think the, the colors generally look better when you build them up in layers and you build up those darkest darks by blending dark colors together. But yeah, a lot of this uh, first section, I'm kind of just outlining my outline going over the pencil with paint and I'll start filling stuff in from there got a lot of background that I'm gonna do with this too I'll uh, kinda of do that in stages throughout this one was kinda of complicated so it was kinda of hard to formulate a plan for it I kinda of just went for it and formulated a plan as I went Yeah, carrying on. Just doing some outlining right now. Got a really thin brush. And I am dipping into my paint frequently just to kind of keep it wet, keep the paint flowing on the paper. A little bit of shading here and there just to differentiate the layers. Once I get this outline in and a little bit of shading, I'm going to do the background just behind his face just to kind of differentiate the the background from the foreground a little bit, make it a little easier for me to see what's happening. But for now, we're just outlining. And this is a really fun one. I enjoyed doing the Wolverine painting that I did last week so much. I wanted to do some more comic book stuff, and I'm planning on doing another comic book piece for my next project. Kind of looking through some reference. This wasn't a recreation of any particular cover or any art previously done by anybody. I wanted this one to be a little more original. So I just found a picture on Google search of uh, an angry face that was at about the right profile and angle that I wanted and kind of uh, use that as a starting point. Change the facial features and the hair a little bit more to look like Eddie Brock and I made him look a little bit more scared than angry because I don't know I was just imagining this as maybe the first time the alien takes him over and that would be a pretty frightening thing to happen so I don't think that somebody would be expressing a lot of calm emotions during such an event. But you can see here I'm adding some orange to the background, like I said, to just kind of help me differentiate the layers, differentiate the background between the foreground. And I wanted a really bright, vibrant color to set against the face. I knew the alien parts were going to be pretty, pretty dark. A lot of blues in there, but a lot of blacks too. Um, mainly with just blue little highlights here and there. But the, the bright orange is going to interact with the, the dark blues in a really cool way. And I'm going to blend this bright orange out into a red and blend that red out into a purple. Just kind of step by step as I go. And this whole painting took about, I don't know, three days maybe working on it. About four or five hours for the first two days. And... That last day was just kind of wrapping up a couple things here and there. Maybe only spent like an hour and a half on it the last day. I feel like I'm getting a lot faster with this style of painting though. And our quarantine has been lifted. I'm going to try to update this channel weekly from now on still. Just kind of mixing my painting with my regular tattooing duties. 
but I might be a little busy, especially these next couple weeks with tattoos, just because it's been a while here in Florida since people could get tattooed. Maybe, you know, I think it was like late March that they shut us down, and it's early June now, so that was a good couple months there of not having any money coming in. Definitely gotta gotta catch back up, but I should still have to, some time here and there to get some painting done. And now I'm kind of in the habit of doing it regularly. I want to keep it up. And here I'm expanding on the brown outline with some blue and kind of darkening up some spots that I want to show through a little more. And adding a little bit of highlight here and there. There's going to be a couple little spots in the tendrils that I leave as just the white of the paper for a little bit more of a dramatic highlight. And I'll fade the blues into the, the white of the paper. So it'll go black to blue to white for the highlights and the tendrils and the, the little alien sections. I found myself dividing up the labor in this between, okay, I'm going to work on just the alien parts for an hour or so, and then I finish that, and it's okay, I'm going to block in some of the facial features for an hour or so, and do it like that. Kind of, you know, bounce between parts a little bit here and there, so I don't get too hung up on one aspect of it, and get carried away and kind of lose sight in the whole thing. And fill in a little more blue here. And I'll start these projects off with sort of a loose idea of what I'm doing and kind of build upon it. Like later on, uh, once I get into the flesh tones, the throat area was looking kind of blank, so I added some more tendrils and stuff kind of going up the neck. And starting on the hair a little bit, shading in the spaces between the teeth where the teeth are going over the hair, just to differentiate the layers of, okay, the hair is underneath the teeth, so I want to put some dark shading behind the teeth into the hair to kind of create that effect. And the hair I built up with uh, a couple different shades of brown and a little, little bit of blue where I wanted there to be like a little bit of darker parts. And once I had the underpainting done with those blues and browns, I went over it with a little bit of a brownish yellow to get that like blonde look. And the parts where I leave the paper blank in the hair, when I do that yellow overpainting, that yellow is going to come through and pop a little more and kind of, uh, you know, make it look like he's got blonde hair with brown undertones. And you can see I blend the red into the orange of the background there. Going into those tendrils with a little bit of brown to build up the darkness in them. And here I'm going to start on the underpainting for the face, just with different browns. Um, maybe a little bit of blue for the darker spots, like you know, inside the mouth and the pupils and the eyes and whatnot. But mostly browns. I changed up my formula a little bit with the flesh tones here too. Uh, I used to mix about equal amounts white with sienna brown, which is a little bit of a reddish brown. So I switched the sienna brown up with a little bit of a darker brown, kind of a burnt umber. And, uh, that gave my flesh tone a little bit less of a pinkish hue. I feel like the like redness of that sienna brown kind of came through with the flesh tone I was mixing up earlier. And I'm pretty happy with the way that this one came through. But yeah, you can see I'm just kind of uh, adding some details to the face there. Added a little bit more to the hair with the blue like I was talking about before. Now this slime that I put on the tongue, I built that up with a couple different shades of green. I, I mixed up a phthalo green with a little bit of yellow to brighten it up. And once I had the green undertones down, I went over those with a few different layers of yellow to bring out the brightness of the slime.
just expanding on the shading in the face a little bit. I'm not going to get into the flesh tones until later. Once I pretty much got to the point where the, the alien parts of it were almost done, I started with the flesh tone. So that won't be until a little bit later. You can see me adding some green on top of the, the yellow with the slime. That first layer I added was yellow and then I went over it with the green and then over it with a couple more layers of yellow to bring the brightness back out. Sometimes when you're doing layers like this and uh, you know you get into your second layer and it doesn't quite come out the way you want it, you can go back over it with some brighter stuff to kind of even it out. Or you could just paint over it with white and start over if you really want to. But that's not really necessary. You can play around with it and tweak it with different colors until you get it about where you want it. I wanted to get that slime to a certain point before I started it in with the undertones of the tongue. Just to make sure it wasn't going to be too light or too dark. I didn't want the the redness of the tongue to kind of blend with the green of the slime at all. Um, I want it to be like distinctly separate layers. So I played around with a little bit with the edges to get them the right amount of darkness to kind of show through through the red. And a little bit of white here and there too just to kind of make the highlights pop a little bit more. And I'm working on the alien parts a little bit more. No, no, it's the neck. Every now and then, you'll see this kind of weird effect where it looks like my hand's moving in slow motion, but it's still going fast. That was from when I would accidentally bump into the tripod that I rigged up. And it would shake a little bit and kind of uh, create that weird slow motion effect. There it is again. It's kind of weird. It looks kind of cool though at the same time. I don't hate it. And I'm just building up some more darkness in the body there. And here we're starting the undertones of the tongue. A little bit of brown. Getting some brown in the gums there too. Building up those blues in that alien part. We're getting there slowly but surely. Yeah, just filling in some more facial features there. I'm building up a vein to pop out of the neck at a certain point there, and I'm preserving the the vein part with the, the white of the paper. And I'll blend into that later once I get into the flesh tones. Tiny, tiny bit of blue in the tongue there for the darker parts. Really glad I went with that orange and red background. It definitely made the whole thing uh, just easier to see as I was working on it. And you can see me building up the hair a little bit more, adding a little bit of blue just where I wanted the lines to be a little crisper. And light brown and dark brown in the hair, other than the blue. Like I was saying earlier, we'll get into that yellow color a little later. And a couple different reds here. You can see me putting down a little bit of a darker red there. That darker red had a little bit more of like a purple flavor to it. The brighter red was a little bit more like 
bright kind of red, like orangish. But I blended a bright orange in the innermost part of the background out into that brighter red and then out into that darker red. And now I'm putting a blue at the, the far edge and blending it out over the darker red to make a purple. Once I'm done with that blue, I'm going to get some more of that darker red and put it over the blue like I'm doing right there. And that's going to make it a really dark purple. And I can get my lighter blue and kind of blend it out from that into the red to kind of uh, blend it out a little more. Have a little bit more of a transition into the red. But I wanted the outside edges of this painting to be like pretty dark and have the darkness kind of closing in on him. But building it up like that I think makes the colors look a little bit more interesting and a little bit more like rich. If I were to just go into there with like a purple rather than making the purple out of combining the blue and the red together, it just would have looked boring. Not as good. That's the best way I can describe it. Now at this point I thought the, the teeth and some of that tongue would show through a little better if I added a black outline to it. So I'm outlining it just with a Sharpie marker, just a really fine point black marker, just to make those teeth stand out a little more. It's kind of cheating, but I don't know. You can't live your life with too many rules. It just makes it harder for yourself. And we put that red right over those brown undertones for that tongue, and it's pretty close to being done. I tweaked that slime a little bit more, adding a couple more layers of yellow to it here and there, just kind of make it a little bit more of a like brighter kind of a neon green. But once I got that tongue to the point where it is now, it was really encouraging. It's like, okay, that part's done. Now I can focus on other things. It makes the rest of it a lot less daunting. And there I'm adding a little bit of yellow over that green. And it happens kind of quick, so it's easy to miss, but every now and then you'll see me smudging that paint in with my fingers. And sometimes I do that because I made a mistake and I'm just kind of sweeping the paint off of a particular part before it dries and gets too dark. Sometimes I'll smudge it with my fingers just to get a little bit more of a fade out. And I don't know, something magic happens whenever you apply your fingers to wet paint. And sometimes you're just kind of doing that hoping for like a happy accident sort of a scenario where something unexpected might happen. And I added a little bit more brown on top of that red in the tongue just to kind of bring out that highlight a little more. And we're doing some browns over the blues and the tendrils now just to kind of darken some of those areas up. We'll go over that with another layer of blue later and that'll pretty much finish off that part that's forming on the other side of his face there. This one was easy to work on for long periods of time just because I could kind of see it coming together the more that I worked on it and that was just encouraging to work on it some more. Every now and then I would hit a roadblock and I'd have to take a break and kind of stare at it for a minute and figure out a, a starting point but once you get going your momentum kind of keeps you flowing. And a little bit more blue into the eyes there. And a really, really light blue into the corners of the whites of the eyes. Because those eyes are balls set inside the skull. And you want that roundness of the surface to come through. You do that with a little bit of shadow in the corners. And you preserve the white whites with the white of the paper. But you should always put some shading 
into the white parts of your eyes to make them look more realistic. I'm going to add a little bit of a darker blue in the edges of that eye later. And here we are adding the layer of blue over the tendrils on the other side of his face. That's more or less going to finish that part off. We might tweak some parts here and there. Now I'm adding the underpainting to the nose. I was kind of neglecting that part for a while. But once I got it in there, I could see it all kind of coming together. There I am smudging some with my fingers again. Just trying to create a little magic. And there I'm adding those yellow tones to the hair. I, I mixed up a little bit of the sienna brown with some yellow, just a little bit, just to kind of muddy the yellow a little bit and make it like less bright. But you'll see on the parts where I left the hair blank, that yellow part will show through a little more. And I'm pretty happy with how the hair color turned out. And here I'm adding some flesh tones into the ears. And I had a, a light flesh tone and a darker flesh tone. Here I'm doing some darker areas, kind of in the cheeks and under the nose and under the bottom lip, putting some darker tones into the throat there. And I'm preserving that vein that I wanted to be popping out. Eddie Brock was a bodybuilder in the comic books, so he was pretty physically imposing. I thought having that neck really popping out and having the veins popping out in it would be a cool thing to kind of get that across. This is the like comic book Eddie Brock. And they casted Topher Grace as Eddie Brock and the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3. I, that was just insulting. Come on. Eddie Brock's supposed to be huge. You get little Topher Grace to play him? That's just wrong. They did Eddie Brock wrong in that movie, man. Terrible. They redeemed it a little bit with that uh, newer Venom movie that came out a couple years ago with old what's-his-face uh, guy that played Bane. It'll come to me later. I keep wanting to say Tom Holland, but that's Spider-Man. Tom Hardy. Their names are kind of similar. Anyways, <laughs> here I am putting some more flesh tone over that underpainting in the face. And I'm preserving a little bit of a highlight over that cheekbone. And some highlights on the nose and kind of next to his mouth there. I needed to even out some of the, the creases in the skin around the eye and then the forehead a little later on after putting that bright flesh tone in. Right now I'm trying to even out that throat a little bit. It came out a little bit dark, but just blending some lighter flesh tone over the darker flesh tone gradually kind of brought it around to the tone that I wanted it to be. You can kind of slowly see it coming into form there. And working on the lips a little bit now. Getting those creases by the eyes. But yeah, if I wanted to even out those creases a little bit, say I put the lighter flesh tone over the brown undertones, and maybe it came out a little too light, I can bring that darkness back out by just blending a little bit of dark brown right over that flesh tone where the creases are. And if you want to do it cautiously and not uh, jump into the deep end, so to speak, you can water that brown a little bit and... Uh, it won't be so dark. You can do a couple different layers to build it up to the desired darkness bit by bit rather than just jumping right in there and hoping you have the right tone. 
the right amount of paint on your brush for that spot. And here I'm adding a little bit more detail into that throat just to kind of fill it in. Like I was saying earlier, it was looking kind of blank to me at this point. Just getting that alien part a little bit more finished before I work on that face a little bit more. I like just going like back and forth between things like that. Build up the face a little bit, get it to a certain point. Okay, I can see where that's going. Now I'm going to work on the alien a little bit more. Get it to a certain point. Okay, I can see where that's going. Now back to the face. And on and on it goes. See there I am evening out those creases a little bit with that brown. Kind of bringing the darkness back out. In the comic books, the way Todd McFarlane drew him, Eddie Brock had those real thick, dark eyebrows. So I wanted to bring a little bit of that out too. And I built those eyebrows up with just some dark brown and dark blue. And I'm adding a little bit of brown into the teeth. That other color that I put in initially was the same color that I mixed for the hair. A little bit of a brownish yellow. And there I'm evening out a little bit more of that flesh tone. Bringing out a little bit of that darkness in the jawline. We're getting pretty close to the end of it. There's the eyebrows. Now you can see that face is coming together pretty nicely. We're getting pretty close to the point of being done with this one. So I just want to remind you to hit that like button if you enjoyed watching. That helps me out. gives me some encouragement. Subscribe. There's new content kind of weekly. Like I was saying, I'm back to work here pretty soon, so I might have less time to paint, but I'm going to try to keep this channel updated frequently. Thanks for watching.